We're going to start a fun project today, right in time for the Christmas holiday season. And uh, we're also going to learn a little bit about Adobe Illustrator. And so we're going we're gonna to complete this project in Illustrator. I know that's a little bit different for you guys in this class, but I think it'll be fun. And the reason why we're doing it in Illustrator is because when we're finished with this, we're going to cut our snowflakes out on the Boss Laser Machine. And we have to use Illustrator because it's a vector-based program. And the, uh, the software for the laser uses vector-based software. So we can't do it in Photoshop because that is pixel-based. So here is an example of the five different snowflakes that we're going to make today. And I just wanted to show you that before we get started. So the first thing you need to do is open Adobe Illustrator if you haven't done so already by the time you started this tutorial. And from here, you're going to create a new file. And if you get, when you first open Adobe Illustrator and if you haven't opened a new file before, you might get the uh, create new file menu right off the bat. So it might even look like something like this, new document. And we're going to create a custom size document. You'll notice that my window has the most recent size. So if you don't see that and you don't have any uh, options over here to make a new document, just click on print and that'll take you right to the document window. And we need to change this from points to inches and it'll be by default eight and a half. We're going to make a four inch by four inch document because our snowflakes are going to be approximately four inches by four inches tall. So go ahead and hit create. And if you want, you can go ahead and put it in a name and the preset details there. So go ahead and put snowflakes and hit create. So that's what we're going to end up with in this document. And I'm going to go ahead and work out of the, uh, the document I created earlier. Um, so I have an example. I have already the, I already have those snowflakes made and I'm going to just basically remake them. So I'm going to toggle back over to this screen and we're going to start off with making this snowflake right in here. It's just a very simple um, six sided snowflake with, uh, with some hexagons and some straight lines. So that's the one we're going to start with first. So I'm going to move in and zoom in over to our screen over here so you can see better. And there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, if you do not show your rulers in Illustrator, um, go up to window and select, I'm sorry, view, not window, select view and select rulers and then show rulers. Mine say hide rulers because they're already on. So you need to select show rulers so you can see those. And then we're going to create some guidelines in our um, project here so that way we can keep everything pretty symmetrical. So to do that, we just click in the ruler over here on the side and drag it over and that'll create a blue guide. We're going to drop it right at the two inch mark. Hello. It's going to make a... Why is it not doing this? Oh, I know why. Sorry. I need to go to guides, show guides. There we go. My guides are already on there. And uh, let me let me clear those out real quick and then we'll start from the beginning. So I'm gonna go up to my view, uh, guides, and I'm gonna clear my guides real quick. There we go, okay. So now you should, now I should be able to click and drag that over. And I'm gonna drop the right into number two there, right on the, vertical guide there and then I'm going to click on the horizontal ruler and then bring that down to number two and that's going to create a uh, give me the the exact center point and and half exact center point in the half point of my of my document there so I can create a symmetrical snowflake all the way around so the first thing I need to do is create a line um, to start my one of my arms of my snowflake so I'm gonna go over here to the tools panel on the left-hand side. And what I'm looking for is underneath the shape tool. You might see it as the rectangle tool at the top there. And if you see the little in, in Photoshop or in any of Adobe's programs, you know that in the tool menu, if you see that little arrow in the corner, there are tools underneath. So I just need to click and hold that and then select the line segment tool is what I'm going to select. And before I draw my line, 
I'm going to go over to my stroke panel in the properties window. If you do not see this open, go to window and select properties. And if you need to take a moment to organize your panels so that they're easier to see, I totally recommend you do that. And you can do that by right clicking on a tab and closing a tab group. So if you don't need it, so you'll notice I only have three panels open right now, which is the properties panel, the layers panel and the libraries panel. In fact, I don't, won't really even need the layers panel, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it that way. So if you want to take a second to close out some of those panels and clean up your right hand side of your document, your workspace, that's fine. Go ahead and do that and then pause and then come back. Okay. So I'm going to take my line and in my properties panel, I'm going to go ahead and, and color my stroke. And I already know what size this is going to be because I've done this before. So I'm going to jump this to 10 points. Now, if you just click the up arrow, it'll do it one point at a time. But if you shift and click the up arrow, it'll do it at 10 points at a time. So if you need to do a lot at once, um, you can get that done pretty quickly. So I'm going to place my crosshair cursor right on that horizontal or that vertical guideline. And I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room at the top because I need to draw in a hexagon later on at the top there. So I'm going to start at about three quarters of the way up on the top. And I'm just going to click my or hold down my shift key and then click and drag down. When I hold the shift key down and I click, click down, it's going to draw a straight line on my page. So there we go. There's our 10 point wide line there with that stroke. That stroke is 10 point wide. Okay. And the next thing I want to do is I want to draw, draw those little arms that come off of the snowflake. So again, I'm going to locate that center point or that center line of the path there and on my guide. And I'm going to actually hit the shift key down again on my keyboard and then click and drag out. If I click and drag out to the right, it's going to be straight. But if I move it up, just like so, it's going to snap it to a 45 degree angle, which is going to make it more uniform. So I'm going to leave it right about there. And then I'm going to come down here a little bit further down the road. And if I want to move this, I think I got it a little too high on my, on my uh, stem there. Click the selection tool or click the, or, or tap the V key. And notice that you have to highlight directly over that line and you'll get a little box on the cursor there that shows that you're, you've selected that, that tool. And if you hit the shift key at the same time and moving it down, it'll keep it on that same, that same point, which is, which is really good. Okay, so now I need to draw my next line. So click my line tool again and come down and line my, line my crosshairs up on that path and hit the shift key. And then drag that out and I'm going to drag it out just a little bit more so it gives it that tiered look okay and so now I've got my two lines on my on my snowflake um, uh, leaf I guess we could call it um, now I need to do that on the exact same side of the line and um, Illustrator has this great tool that allows us to do that pretty easily and so I'm gonna come over to here and you're gonna see that there's a tool in the toolbar called the rotate tool and underneath that, in that tool set, is another tool called the Reflect tool. And that's the one we're going to use to essentially mirror these um, flake little flake pieces. So I'm going to click that. And you need to click, you need to hold down the Alt key. And you're going to find the point, you need to identify the point where you want to mirror that line. And I, we want to mirror it at the very bottom point where it intersects our um, stem of the, the snowflake. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then I'm going to click. And what it's going to do is it's going to flip that arm to the other side, which is exactly what I want. And um, if, you, if it doesn't do that for you, make sure that your axis is set to vertical right here. If it's set to angle, it'll do it as something different. Or if it's set to horizontal, it'll do it something different. Now, in order to mirror it, so I have two um, you know, little snowflakey things on each of the stems, I need to hit the copy button. So I hit the copy button and it's going to produce exactly the exact same replica at that exact same point. Pretty cool, huh? So next I'm going to select my move tool. So hit the V key on your keyboard 
or select it in the tool panel. And then I need to select the other little leaf guy, the other little part of that snowflake up there. And then I need to select the mirror tool again. And if you hit the O key on your, t on your keyboard, it'll automatic, it'll, that's the quick select key for the mirror tool, or you can go over to your tool and just click it again. Okay. So same thing. I'm going to hit my alt key in that anchor point right there where it intersects with the, the stem. I'm going to alt key, hit the alt key and then click. And it's going to flip it there and i just need to hit the copy make sure it's set to vertical and your reflect options there on the axis and hit copy and then it's going to produce that other arm and then go ahead and hit the v key again and if you click away you can see what you've produced there so i think looks pretty good i think i'm satisfied with that and then the next thing i need to do is put that little um, hexagon piece at the very top to create that little you know kind of shape at the end of it so I'm going to click over here and to go over to my tool set or my shape set and select the polygon tool out of the, the tool options or the shape options. And before I go ahead and before I draw that in there, I want to change the settings of this in the properties panel. I'm going to turn the stroke off and I'm going to turn the fill on and that's also going to be filled with black. So the reason why we're filling everything with black at this point is because when we cut these out with the boss laser, um, these won't be, you know, colored or printed or anything like that. Um, so we need them to be black because when we put it into the software, the boss laser, it needs to know what those cut lines are. And so we need to use black to do that. So um, I'm going to draw my hexagon here. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the shift key and draw my hexagon and I'm going to move it where I need it to be in just a minute. Um, but I want to make sure it's straight first and I'm going to go ahead and eh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Just like that. And just, and then release the, release your mouse. And then now I can rotate it. And over here in the right hand side in the properties panel, you have the transform panel right there. I can rotate that 30 degrees, just like that. And it's going to bring the little triangle piece down a little bit. And if I hit my V key to move it or select the move tool, click and move that down, make sure it's lined up. That point is lined up with your, that, that vertical horizontal line and then drop it in there. So now we have a nice little shape going on. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to repeat this shape five more times all the way around in a circle in an exact circle and uh, illustrator has a great tool set for this but um, before I do that real quick I need to turn off my guides so I'm going to go up to view guides and hide them I'm going to hide my guides and then with my move tool my selection tool I'm going to click and drag that whole little shape area. So all of those shapes are selected. Okay. Do that one more time. And then I'm going to come over to my right hand panel here where the properties panel is. And there's quick actions down here in the bottom. And I'm going to group those real quick just so that they're all grouped together. Okay. Then I'm going to come back up to view and come back to my guides and show guides, turn them back on. Okay, next we're going to do kind of like what we did with the reflect tool or the, the mirror tool. Um, we're going to move and repeat these shapes all the way around in a circle. So in my tools panel, instead of the reflect tool, we're going to take that tool and select the rotate tool, the one at the top. Or if you hit the R key, it's the, it's the R key and it'll go right to that, that tool, the, the shortcut key. The anchor point is again, we're going to do it at the very bottom of this, of this snowflake arm and hit the alt key and click. And what you're going to see is it's going to turn it right away. Okay. Cause uh, at least in terms of the rotate angle, mine is set at 60 degrees. Yours might be set at 90. So change that to 60 and make sure your preview button is also checked. And like the re reflect tool, we, we need to hit copy so that it duplicates this action. But what it's going to do is it's going to copy it at 60 degrees rotated. So click copy and there we go. Okay. Now 
Illustrator has this great shortcut key for repeating a process. So it instead of like a control C, control V scenario, um, Illustrator has a uh, an option that allows us to repeat this process and move an arm at the same 60 degree angle that we just did. Um, and it's the it is control D or command D in Photoshop that is deselect. So in Illustrator, you don't have select and deselect. Um, so in Illustrator, we're going to use the command D key or control D, and we're going to do that five more times. And it's just going to repeat that process all the way around. So we have our snowflake. Okay. If you need to make an adjustment to any of these little arms, like if you don't like how close these are together, which I could totally see, you would probably need to control Z this option all the way back to your single arm and make those adjustments all the way back to that to that beginning. So make sure you get those right exactly how you want them um, from the from the get go. Um, I'm not going to go back all the way to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is and uh, finish this up. So I'm going to grab my move tool again and then click on here so I can see it all um, how it all pans out. And then last but not least, I want to put a hexagon right in the middle of this um, center. It'll add a little bit of style to it, but it'll also add a little bit of strength when we cut this out of the laser. So that's really important that we add this hexagon in here. Okay. Um, if you decide to use this shape to cut it out for, for your shape. So I'm going to click on my hexagon tool, my polygon tool, and I'm going to hover it right in the crosshairs of my guides right there. And then I'm going to hit the shift and alt key at the same time. So that way I can grow it from the center and grow it from the center out so I know how big I want to make it. And I'm going to probably do right about there. Okay. And I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to rotate it 30 degrees. So that way those points are lined up with the little um, arms and uh, we get that cool little shape in the middle there. We're not quite done yet, but um, we are done with making our snowflake as it is, but we need to do a couple more steps before we we're, we're call this done. And then uh, if we decide to use this one for our um, cutting out the laser, um, we need to do a couple of steps before we export it. So we need to go back up to our view menu and select guides, hide guides again. And then we need to have our selection tool selected. And we're going to select the whole snowflake, just like so. And up here in the object menu, we're going to select expand. And the reason why we need to do this, and you're going to get a little menu here, and just go ahead and click OK. The reason we need to do this is because we built this whole snowflake with lines that we filled out with strokes. And um, if we were to try to group all of these together without hitting expand, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't select the whole like shape as as kind of what it looks like as like a rectangle. We'd have to build this whole snowflake using rectangles instead of lines, which and another one of the snowflakes that we'll do, we will use a rectangle tool more than the line tool. But the line tool gives us more options to use um, for snowflakes than uh, the rectangle tool does. So that's why we're using the uh, the line tool. Okay. So I've highlighted all that. I went to object and expand. And then next over here in my right hand properties panel, there's a pathfinder um, panel window option there. And there's one that shows two solid boxes and we need to click that one. It says click to unite. So what we're going what that's going to do is it's going to essentially unite all those shapes into one and create one shape. So those, all those little shapes that we just created are now joined together. So see, let's see how we did. We got pretty close. I think it's a little different, maybe even a little bit cooler than the example that I made before. Those lines are a little bit bigger. It's got a little more dimension to it. So I kind of like that. Okay. So the next option, the next, uh, the next snowflake that we're going to build is this one right here. This one looks really complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. A lot of the same steps that we did in this one um, will be like the, like this one here. Okay. And it's just an extra shape in there, um, to be honest, and, uh, it'll go by pretty quickly. So we're going to do that one next. I'm going to zoom in. 
And so if you haven't done so already, you can move your your example, this this snowflake, you can move it off to your artboard here and move it off to the side and now get ready to start a new one with your with your document with a with the white document there. So if you hit command minus, you can zoom out and then move your snowflake off. Just like so. Move it off. And then control plus or command plus and then move back into your document. I need to turn my guides back on. So I'm gonna go view, guides, show guides. So those are back on. And I need to grab my line tool again. So over here where my polygon tool is, click underneath that and grab that line tool. And I can go a little bit longer on this one since I'm not putting anything at the top of this one on this design. So I'm gonna go pretty close to the top of that four inch um, box there. And again, we're gonna hit the shift key on our keyboard and click and drag down all the way down to the bottom where it intersects our two um, lines there and then release. Now you're gonna see this time because what I forgot to do is I forgot to set the stroke thickness and the stroke color. So it doesn't look like there's anything going on in right over here. So over here in my properties panel, you're gonna see I've got no fill and I've got no stroke color. So I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna click into that box and select the black. And then I'm gonna select and then hit the shift up arrow so I make a 10 point line, okay? And next I'm gonna draw a couple more of those lines and if I need to come back, to check here and see what do I need here, I need just a couple of short guys that are about the same size. About the same size of um, on the two sides there. So I go ahead and go about three quarters of the way down that way and hit your shift key and then draw those out. And they're gonna be kind of short. You'll notice that when you click and drag something out, you get a little gray dialog box next to your next to your tool. And it's telling you how big that is. And it's also telling me the degrees that I'm making that. So right now that's at half an inch and then right there that's at like 0.4 inches so i'm going to drag that out to about 0.4 inches and then i'm going to go ahead and grab my move tool or click the v key on my keyboard and then i'm going to hit the alt key on this same shape so i'm going to hit the alt key notice how the notice how the cursor changes just a little bit that's going to allow me to click and just like in photoshop that'll duplicate that shape so I can click and drag that duplicated layer down. And if I hit the shift key, it'll drag it down on the same axis that I'm bringing that on. And if I release my mouse, it'll duplicate it just like that. So if I want to move it up just a little bit, maybe I just didn't quite get, get it where I needed it to be. Hit the shift key again. Make sure you're grabbing it right in the center. Shift key up. Come on. There we go. Click and then hit the shift key. Okay. So next I need to mirror these just like I did with uh, in the last in the last uh, snowflake. So I'm gonna click on one of those and then select over here. I'm gonna select hit the O key on my keyboard. And then with the Alt key in that bottom point of the top one there. I'm going to click on that and it's going to flip it and don't forget to hit the copy. So it does that again and then hit the V key on your keyboard again and then select the bottom line and then hit the O key again and then alt click on that bottom point just like that and copy. So it's just repeating that same process that we just did. Okay. So that gives us our basic shape. And I'm gonna come down here real quick and look at what we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight arms this time. So instead of the 60 degree um, arms on the other snowflake, these are 45 degree arms. So I'm gonna zoom in. Too much, there we go. And um, remember we need to, we're gonna use our rotate tool and do that same process that we did with the other arm and the other the other snowflakes. So I'm going to hit the R key. 
actually do this real quick. Hit, hit the V key one more time and then click on the stem so that way it's selected. That's, or actually, uh, I'm, I'm missing a couple of steps here. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I forgot that we need to go up to view and go to our guides and then hide our guides. So that way we don't grab those accidentally and bring those into our um, shape. And then click and drag your mouse and your cursor so it selects all of those shapes together and then group them. Okay, then now unclick and then go up to view guides and then show guides. And I guess I, I could just use the command key, command semicolon key, and that would take care of that for me. Um, that's the quick key. I'll start using that um, from now on. Okay, now select that whole the whole shape there. Make sure you click right in the middle. And now hit the R key for the rotate tool. And we want to set that point down at the very bottom of that shape. And so hit the Alt key and click in that very bottom anchor point right in the crosshairs there. And then we're going to get a rotate. Now we want to rotate this at 45 degrees, not 60. So then we're going to hit copy. Uh-oh, something went wrong. I'm going to control Z real quick. Sometimes this happens. Make sure I don't have any copies of anything. Don't. Okay. Back to my R tool. Alt click. There we go. Okay. Now I got it. Now we got it going on. Okay. Now I need to switch that from 60 degrees to 45 and then copy. And remember the the process, the repeat process is command or control D and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six more times after that. So we have a total of eight arms. Okay. Now select the V key. And I'm going to real quick zoom out and kind of look at what we have going on here. So last but not least, there's a star that is right in the middle of this whole thing. And that's what gives it that inside shape of the rest of it. So if you look at it, this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sided star. So I'm going to zoom in and underneath our shape tool, again, I'm going to select the star tool and I'm going to um, start the start of this star tool right in the center point of those crosshairs. And I'm going to start drawing that out. I'm going to click it out. And the first thing you're going to notice is your star may only have five sides to it. Okay. And I'm, oops, sorry. I'm going to start this over again. Don't, don't release your mouse just yet. Hold your mouse. And if you've done that, like I did, um, hit control Z and then start again and bring it out again. So my star is already set to go because I did this earlier but you might only have five stars. You might have something like that. So to change the number of sides to a star in Illustrator, you hit the up arrow or the down arrow. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five sides. So now I need to add six, seven, eight. And if I rotate this or rotate my mouse, it rotates it where I want it to be. And I, I want it to fit just like that, just like so, okay? The other thing that we can do is with the, um, with the, on your keyboard, it'll be control or the command key, you can change the shape or the pointedness of the star by holding down the control or command key and moving your mouse or your control pad up and down, and it'll change the shape of that star. So I'll give it a little bit more point or a little less. You can also, if you hit the Alt key, really change it, really change the look. It's an inverted star, but we don't want an inverted star. We definitely want to mess with the points on this. We don't want it too pointy, but we don't want it super flat either. So we're going to kind of go for something right in the middle, about somewhere like there. And when I release this, like so, it should give me, um, 
because I didn't change my stroke at all and it's at a ten that ten point stroke, then it shouldn't fill it. So it should give me that shape. Now if you have something different, adjust the fill so it's not filled and adjust your stroke. So if you look at this star, my star is just a little bit different than the example that I did below here. I've got a little bit less smaller diamond in, in here and there. So you can come back in here and if you want to mess with that, you want to change, maybe the star is too thick for you. We can, you can drop that down to maybe like a seven or eight, you know, something like that. And it'll make that star just a little bit fatter there. Um, and it'll just change that shape just a little bit. Or you could just make it a little bit smaller. You know, it just, just depends on the kind of look that you're going for. Okay. That's a beautiful thing about snowflakes is there's no snowflakes that are alike. So even if yours doesn't look exactly like this, that's okay. As long as it looks cool. Right. So that's it. That's the, that's the end of this one. So next I need to go up to view again and go to my guides and then hide guides. And then I need to hit the V key or have my selection tool selected and then click and drag that whole shape there, just like so. And then go up to object, expand and select object, expand, and then click OK. And then it has all those selected. And then over here in my Pathfinder window, in the Pathfinder menu, I click the click to unite the double solid square on the left hand side. And that'll give me my solid snowflake shape. I'm going to go ahead and minus this out here. And I'm going to click and drag this down below the one that I built earlier. And you can see they're just slightly different, but pretty close. I think the, the steeple, the, the shape of that star is just a little bit more pointed than the one that I made earlier. So, and they both look good, I think, too, also. Okay, so we've got two stars done now. How about we build something um, a little bit more different, like this guy over here on the right-hand side. So this one may look like it's complicated, but it's really about the same process that we've been doing all along. And this is part of the reason why we're using the line tool because the line tool has so many more options than the rectangle tool, which we'll do towards the end here. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And again, I'm going to bring up my lines by going up to view rulers. I'm sorry, guides show guides. There's my guides again. And I'm going to select my line tool out of the shapes tool again. And I'm going to draw about the same type of line that I just drew in the last one. So about more towards the top there. And I'm going to hit the shift key and drag that down right into the crosshairs there. And then let go. And then notice that I don't have anything going on in the fill or anything. So I need to set my stroke there to black. And then I'm going to up my points here. And this time I'm going to go up to about a seven, maybe an eight. And then from here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go into the stroke panel and to do that, I'm just going to click on the word stroke right here in the properties panel. And it's going to bring up some options for the stroke. And down here in the bottom, there's a little option called profile. And right now our line is uniform. So if we change that, you're going to, you click on the drop down menu, you're going to see different options here. So you can really do a lot of different things with the, with the shape. The one that I'm going to show you is this one right here. And it's kind of got like a pen shape to it. Now, right now, the fatter end is towards the middle and the skinnier end is towards the end. And I want to flip that around. You can keep it that way if you'd like, but I like it like this. So I'm going to flip it around so the fatter end is at the end. And next, I'm going to do another couple of lines just like I did earlier. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit and show you what we got to work with. So there's a couple of little leaf guys here coming off and then there's smaller ones on the inside. So that's kind of like, this is like a double, a double snowflake here with those, you know, kind of shaped leaves. So I'm going to zoom in too much. There we go. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to find my middle path on that horizontal line or that vertical line and using the shift key. Once again, I'm going to shift this out like so. And I think I might have that too low. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that line real quick. 
and come just a little bit lower and about there shift and then out and then same thing i'm gonna bump this up to about seven or eight and then i'm gonna click on the stroke and this time with the profile instead of uniform and instead of the the profile with number five the one that looks like more like a pencil i'm going to select one that's more uniform the first one the first option with profile like that so it looks more like a leaf okay and then i'm going to go ahead and um, do another one like right underneath and this one might be a little bit larger just kind of like the other one like the other one that we did earlier so i'm just going to go ahead and bring it out just a little bit more and again i'm going to bring it out to about seven or eight points and then click on my stroke menu again and then where the profile is i'm going to change that to the same one that i just did a minute ago so it looks slightly different because one is longer than the other i'm going to click my move tool real quick and click on so so you can kind of see how that looks okay so I need to mirror these again, and if you can, if you want, you can play with these shapes all you want um, in, in, in this tutorial. You can make it how you look, how you want it to look, all you want. Um, I'm just going to go through and show you how to do it. So I'm going to click on this guy, and then we need to click that mirror tool again. And remember, that's the O key on our keyboard, so you just hit the O key, and then with that point on that that vertical line, hit the shift or hit the Alt key, and then click. And that mirrors it and then make sure you hit copy okay and then click your move tool by hitting the v key on your keyboard and then select that top leaf and then hit the o key again and then with that that bottom point alt click and then that rotates it or copies it mirrors it and then hit copy okay so then we have our kind of our arm there and uh, remember that before I go too further, let's select our move tool and let's go to our view and guides and then hide our guides. And then we're going to click and drag and select that whole arm and then group those together. So that way we can uh, rotate those all around at once. And we're going to go up to view, guides, show guides again. I go ahead and zoom out real quick and I need to double check how many arms we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So those are set at a 60 degree angle instead of 45. So I'm gonna zoom back in. And I have that selected. And I need to select the rotate tool. So let's select R and hit the Alt key down there on the bottom and click. And then there it starts rotating, rotating it at 45. Remember that was from our last tutorial. So I need to change that to 60 and then hit copy. And then again, do that repeat process, shortcut key, control D or command D. One, two, three, four more times. So command D four more times. And then you get our cool looking little uh, snowflake with kind of like the leaf, leaf little look. Okay, next we need to add the smaller ones in between. So I'm just going to go back over to my line tool here. And I'm going to click... Actually, I need to, sorry, click your move tool and then unselect so you're not selected on anything right there. And then now click, click your line tool and then find that center path. And what you're going to do is you're going to click and bring this out. Pay attention to that measurement right there in the middle. So notice that little, little gray box there and it should say D and it should say something in inches, like mine says 0.79 inches. And then underneath that, it shows 60 degrees. And you want that to show 60 degrees right in the middle. So that way we're keeping that line halfway in between. So it's going to be uniform later on when we rotate it around. Okay. So I'm going to line it up right about there. And then I'm going to increase this to approximately this the same well let me see here let me double check Is that thinner it's a little bit thinner so I'm gonna zoom in here zoom back out and drop that down actually to maybe like six seven five there we go and then click on the stroke menu and I'm gonna use that earlier one that I did before the width profile number five 
So it has that nice, elegant looking uh, stem look. Okay. And then I'm going to draw two leaves um, on the side of it. Now, this is a little tricky here because we are, notice, pay attention to this angle here. Notice that I'm not using the shift key on this because if I use the shift key, it's going to make me do it at a certain angle. And this is at zero. And this is going to be harder for me to do later on. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do the shift key on this one and make it zero. It's going to kind of stick out just to the side a little bit like this. Okay, and I'm going to do it like that. Now, if I do this on the other side, I'm going to show you what it's going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that stroke again. I'm going to do the stroke at about five and select the stroke profile to be that width profile number one. So it gets that leaf looking look right there. Okay, so if I want to do this, I'm going to mirror it. And it's going to not quite, well, I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to, Click my O key again and hit the Alt key right at that point and then click copy and it's going to look funny. It's not going to be like the right, it's not going to be the right look. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the rotate tool to do this instead of the mirror tool. So I'm going to click the R, R key and Alt click on that point. Okay. And I'm going to just go ahead and play with this number here to see what it looks like and i think it's at about i'm just guessing at about 130 degrees and remember we want to copy it so all we're trying to do is kind of give it the little mirror mirroring effect there so see it's it's i think it's slightly off and i'm not sure if i'm totally in love with that direction so i'm gonna go ahead and delete that real quick i'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and i'm gonna redraw this and get that center point there and then come out and I'm just going to freehand it this time. So I'm going to do it at about 10 degrees there, something that's even. So I know I can find that, figure that out later. The reason why it's not working is because remember we drew this one at an angle. We drew this one at an angle. So the, the center, it's, it's, it's trying to rotate it or mirror it based off of a, like a horizontal axis. And it's not basing it off of this line here. So it's, it's what it's, it's making it weird. So we're going to increase this point to five points, make that profile round like that. And, um, then I'm going to take my move tool and I'm actually going to try something else. I'm going to go, I'm going to take my move tool, my selection tool. I'm going to hit the alt key and I'm going to make a copy of this, bring it out. And then I'm going to come over here to my properties panel and then just flip it along the horizontal axis and see what I get. See, it just doesn't, doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Okay, so that's, that's not going to work. I'm going to delete that. Select this again. We're going to have to go back to the rotate tool and do this by, do this by hand or by eyeballing it. So select that, hit the R key, and then hit that bottom point of that little line, and then Alt, click, okay? And I'm going to say... We got to get close to like maybe 110, maybe 100. I'm going to go with 100 and hit copy and see what we get. Close enough. I'm going to go with it. Okay. So same thing like we did earlier. We need to grab these two shapes. So all I'm going to do is just draw a box around the top part of that, and you'll notice that it grabs the whole thing. So I'm going to show that again. So with, what's cool about the... Uh, Illustrator is I don't have to go around and select the whole thing. It knows what to select that whole shape. So I'm just going to click and drag around the top and it's going to select the whole shape for me. And then I'm going to group that. And then from here, I'm going to use the rotate tool again. So I'm going to unclick there and hit the R key. I'm sorry, hit the, hit the V key again, select that whole shape and now hit the R key. There we go. And down here in the bottom, in the bottom of that tool, or bottom of that shape where the crosshairs are, hit the Alt key and then click. And then it's going to rotate for us. Now it's rotating it at 100 degrees. Now remember, we did everything at 60. Okay? And in fact, we could move this to 60 and it would show us that, right? If we moved it 60, it would show us 60. Okay? So we're going to do it at 60 because it's going to go in between all the other ones and we're going to hit copy. So there we go. So now again, control D or command D and it's going to command 
and copy in between all those other spaces that we did before. Pretty cool, right? So now from here, I need something in the center because I can't cut this out on the laser uh, just the way it is. It would just be too thin and it would just break. So I want to put a circle right in the middle of that. So I'm going to come over to my shape tool and select the ellipse tool. And you know what? We need to unselect this thing right here. So click the V key, click off. There we go. Okay, now that's better. Now select the circle tool, the ellipse tool. Okay, so right in the middle, place your cursor right in the middle of that whole thing and you kind of line up the crosshairs with the other crosshairs. Okay, and hit the shift key and the alt key at the same time and then click your mouse out. And what it's going to do is it's going to draw a circle from the center. So you can decide how big of a circle you'd like. I'm going to do something fairly dainty, just like that. Now I just made it, didn't fill it, it just made it a stroked circle. So over in my properties panel, I need to change the stroke to no stroke and then fill to fill. Okay, and there's shortcut keys for that, but we're not going to get into that right now. So I'm going to click the move tool and then kind of check out my work. I'll take it. And I think from here, we're I'm going to call it done. So if, now what I want to do is I need to go up to view, guides, and then hide our guides. And then click and drag that whole thing again. Okay. And then object, expand appearance. We might have to do this a couple of times here. So you'll see what I mean here in just a sec. So we have all those selected and then in the Pathfinder window, select click to unite the double square. And what you're going to notice is the circle here didn't get selected and didn't get united. So again, we're going to click off and then click and select all of that whole thing again one more time and then go up to object and expand and it'll grab that circle and unite and it'll grab that in there and it'll combine it all together. Okay. So now we have that. So you have to do that twice. So don't forget that part. So you shouldn't see any blue lines after you select it. And you should see just solid. If you see blue lines, then you didn't you didn't get it right. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Command or Control Save real quick. So I save my work. And I'm going to move this over to my other example that I built earlier. Pretty close. A little different. But uh, not too bad. I maybe got some thicker, thicker leaves in there. I kind of like this one a little bit better. So I'll probably play with that a little bit more later on. Okay. Um, now for the next one. This next one um, is um, we're going to go ahead and do this guy right here. And it's kind of similar to some of the other ones we've done, um, but just, you know, a little more solid and has a little bit more of a basic shape to it. And uh, this one was one of the first snowflakes I did. So um, we're going to come back in and do that um, right now. So zoom back in. Go ahead and pop. Okay, so then now you need to go up to view, guides, show guides. Okay, I'm gonna zoom back in real quick and take a look at this guy. So we're gonna use the rectangle shape tool to, to design this one because we can't make these um, uh, corner shapes, these pointed shapes with the line tool. We have to do that with the rectangle tool. So I'm going to zoom in here, bring this up, go over to our shape tool and select the rectangle tool. And I'm going to go ahead and build out our shape. Now, the bummer thing about using the rectangle tool, I'm going to delete this real quick, is that it's not as exact as the line tool, like you know, dragging it down and creating the shapes that we need and the size. So I, we can size that exactly. It's more of an eyeball. So we're going to just bring that down and I'm going to just kind of eyeball it. And it, you can tell in the gray box, it's a quarter inch. I've got a quarter inch 0.25 and click my move tool over here. And then the, and the transform panel, it will tell you exactly how big it is. So if I want to make this exactly 0.25 inches, I can do that. And then I want to make sure that this is centered on our vertical line here. Okay. And then to get, to make sure that our, um, do we get those shapes at the top, the, 
the pointed shapes, um, we got to use the um, the direct selection tool. So I'm going to zoom in here real quick and show you how this is going to work. So you'll see when we have a shape in Illustrator, you have the 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 boxes on the outside, and then you have these little you have these little corners on the inside there. Okay, and I want to just target just these outside ones right here. So um, to do that, I need to select the direct selection tool. So I'm going to hit the A key and notice that the color changes. So it's white. It's a white arrow versus a black arrow. And when I click on just one corner, it'll allow me to just adjust one corner. So if I drag this down, it'll just do one corner. Okay. But I want to do two corners. So what I need to do is I need to hit shift and select these two corners right up here. So now you notice that I have two dots up here. So now when I resize, when I do this, it'll let me change this, okay? So as I'm dragging this, hit the Alt key. When you click and drag this dot, hit the Alt key. Actually, I'm gonna reset this, hang on. Control Z. So before I, before I start dragging this in, I'm gonna hit the Alt key and then click. So as I'm hovering over this dot, I hit the Alt key and click, and I'm not dragging yet, I'm just clicking. So notice below the arrow, it's changing, there's a little shape that changes, so it, by default, it's rounded. And then it's kind of concave, and then you have a straight edge. I believe if I try to, so if I try to bring in the conical shape, I'll do that. And I can actually click, and it'll change back to that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag this with the, the straight shape all the way down. So I get that pointed look just like that. Okay. So if you get lost, this next step, will show you how to do it again. Cause we're going to do the same thing with the arms on the, on the left and right sides. So I'm going to use that square tool again and I'm going to click and use my, but this time what I have to do is this is the, this is the thing that's different about using the, 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 the rectangle tool is I can't turn it, turn my shape, because when I try to turn it, it just makes a box. So I have to kind of eyeball this, eyeball this rectangle and, and bring it out like this. So it's not the, the best way to do this, but it's the only way we're going to do it this way, okay? And then I make that rectangle shape, and then zoom out, and I can kind of show you how that's going to look down here, okay? And we're only going to do the one. If I wanted to, what I could do... There's a couple of different ways I could do this. I'm going to delete this shape real quick. I could click on this shape here, the original shape that we did, and then alt click and then bring that out and copy it, resize it, and then rotate it. And then bring that in, just like just like so. So I could do it that way. <clears throat> Which might actually be the easiest way to do this. So I'm going to bring this down just like this. This is going to be built just a little bit differently than all the other ones that we've done. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same shape that I just did. And then I'm going to alt click and drag that out. So I duplicate it. And then over here in my rectangle properties panel, I'm just going to flip it. So this little button where it says flip along horizontal axis. And then I'm going to have to line this up exactly so they look the same. So that's, that's the tricky part, is getting that to line up exactly the same, which is not, is, I mean, sometimes you can get it exactly right on the first time. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of tweaking with that, which makes the other way of doing all the other ways we've done and built the snowflakes a little bit easier because we can just use that mirror tool and it just does it for us. So I'm not going to get too crazy with this. I'm just going to do the two arms like this, like so, okay? And then I'm going to go up to the view window and guides, hide guides. And then I'm going to click and drag and select those shapes. And we're going to group those again. And then I'm going to go up to view again, guides, and then show guides. I'm going to zoom back out and show you we've got six of those guys. So I'm going to zoom back in and click the rotate tool. Actually, I'm going to select this whole shape first and then click the rotate tool. And I'm going to place that center point right in the middle here. And you'll notice that the center point, since it's a rectangle, it's different. 
than all the other shapes that we've been using the lines because uh, because it's a rectangle a line would show you the center point being right in there so we need to make sure that we've clicked that center point right at that crosshairs click that and it'll rotate it exactly how we've been doing it before um, it just looks a little bit different than um, the line tool that we've been using so hit copy and then do that six four more times so command D or control D get that all the way around okay and then select the V tool and then click off that so you kind of have that nice rough shape there now I'm gonna build a star in here again so that star is one and I believe it's actually more than that because it probably fits all the way inside of those areas so it's probably one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12. It's a 12 sided star. It's 12 sided because some of the points are hidden by the, the arms of the snowflake. So I'm going to click on the star, click on the star tool. And again, we're going to do, we're going to build this out from the center. And so I'm going to click and drag this out. And before I get too far, I need to make this 12 sides. So right now I think it's eight. So if you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't let go of your, your mouse. Don't let go of your the clicker on your mouse. And then hit the arrow key up. So I have nine, 10, 11, 12. And they're two, they're two pointed. So now I'm going to hit the control key or the command key and bring my mouse in. And it's going to make those shapes, that shape just a little less steep. I'm going to let go of my control or command key, and then I'm going to bring that out again to make it bigger. And then I can rotate this exactly where I want it to be. Okay, you see how that works? Pretty tricky, huh? And then I'm going to release it. So now when I click on my move tool and click that, you're going to see those stars right in the middle, kind of those points, like little barbs. And I think that looks really cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to um, put in this, I want to make it hollow. So I want to have a hollow um, uh, hexagon, okay? So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in real quick. And I'm going to do, first, first I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and go to View, Guides, Hide Guides, okay? And then I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to do this this way because you'll, you'll see why in a minute um, and then I need to go up to object expand and then unite to click okay and actually yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way okay and then go up to view guides again show guides okay so our guides are back now I'm gonna come back over and select the polygon tool and I'm gonna select that right in the middle of the, right in the crosshairs there and with my alt shift key I'm gonna bring that out okay I'm gonna hold down the alt and shift key at the same time okay and I'll make it about oh yay big and right now it's black so we need to change that from black to white so in my fill I click over to here click on white okay so now I have my hole but now I, I still need this to all to be one shape. So I need to come up to my view, guides, and hide guides again. And I'm gonna click and select that whole object again. Okay, and I'm gonna go up to object, expand. And it's gonna bring in that white. And then here we have next to the click to unite. If I click this guy, it's gonna turn everything white. So control Z, don't do that next to this button is click to minus front so i want to get rid of this white square and it's going to minus that out from the rest of the black i click that guy boom and now when i click this off there's my hole pretty neat huh it just basically took that white spot out of the black and minus it so that's a pretty cool tool to use um, and we're going to do some of that in this next one as well. So this is the last snowflake we're going to be designing. And this one is like the negative. It's like a negative version of the snowflake. And these holes, the reason why it's a negative version is because these 
little circles in here are detached um, from the rest of it. And we're going to use that minus um, that minus approach um, that we did in just this last one. So, um, and it's actually a different way of doing it. So I'm going to come back over to here. And I think this is my favorite one just because it's a little different. So we're going to use the polygon tool and the fill needs to be black. And uh, we're going to make this fairly big. You know what? And we probably need to turn on our guides again. So I'm going to delete that and go view guides, show guides. And we're going to build this in from the center out. So place your cursor right in the middle and hit the shift key and alt key at the same time. And then drag that out and make it as big as you like. As just don't go over the square there and release. And then we're going to rotate this 30 degrees. So over here in our properties panel where we have our rotation, we're going to rotate 30 degrees. Okay. And then from there, we're going to build in our lines. But this time when we build in our lines, select the line segment tool. This time when we build our lines, we're going to use uh, our fill is going to be no fill again. We're using our, oops, I hate when I do that unselect it and then select our line tool there we go with our line tool selected just in case you did that you just control z just like i did unfill we're going to do a no fill okay and with the stroke instead of black we're going to use white and if you want to go ahead and start off with using the 10 points just hit the shift up shift click and then get that to 10 points Okay, so I'm going to show you another couple of cool things with the line tool here as well. Um, that makes this one um, pretty fun. So um, we're going to put a circle right up at the top here. So we're we're going to bring this down just a little bit. We're not going to go all the way to the top of that um, shape. We're going to probably go about three quarters of the way up, and then hit the shift key and then drag that down to our center point and make that. And uh, next we're gonna do those arms again and I'm gonna just kind of come over and see how many arms we have. We have two arms. So we're gonna put those, about, and we're gonna make those the same length as well. Save a little bit of time. So shift, click out. And I don't like that. So I'm gonna move those down just a little bit. Shift, click out. There we go. And before I go further, what I'd like to do with this is I want to round the end of this line. So if I click on the stroke menu again, you'll notice that there's a cap option. And right now we have it just straight or a butted cap. If you make that a round cap, it makes it rounded. So we have a rounded line. Pretty cool. So I'm just going to duplicate this same line. So I'm going to grab my move tool and click the alt key on my keyboard. Make sure I'm grabbing that right in the middle and dragging that, dragging that down. If you click the shift key, it'll keep it on the same axis and then release. And now we have our two arms there. And then I need to mirror these again. So I'm going to hit the O key and find my point where I want to mirror it and alt click. And that does that, rotates it and hit copy. And then grab our move tool again, click that top one. And then click the O key and click the Alt on that bottom point. Alt click and we mirror it and then copy. Just like that. And then last but not least, I need to put that circle there on the top. So I'm going to click on my shape tool, click the ellipse tool there. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit the shift key so I make a nice um, round circle and just going to. If you hit the Alt key, it'll make it kind of somewhere in there. So hit the Alt key so it lines up just nicely, just like that. And it's going to stroke it. And need to turn that stroke off and fill it with white. So there we go. There's our little, oops. Click on the Move tool there so then you can see it. Looks pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so I just need to repeat this um, all the way around. Kind of zoom out of here again and check this out. Like... This is six, six sides again, just like the other ones that we've done. So um, this one's going to be a little bit trickier to select. So I'm going to go up to View, Guides, and Hide Guides. And this time, instead of clicking and dragging, because if I click and drag, it's going to want to grab that um, hexagon. 
So I'm gonna hit my shift key and hold down the shift key and select all of these shapes. Make sure that you're clicking in the middle of those lines so it grabs those lines and you should see all of those lines in blue. You'll know that those are selected. And then over in the right hand side, hit the group so it groups those together really quickly. Okay, now that I have those selected, go ahead and hit the R key for the rotate tool. And in that bottom point, um, Alt click so it rotates it. You remember hit copy 60 degrees, we'll keep it that way. And then hit Command D or Control D four more times to get all those arms in there, just like we've been doing the whole time, this whole tutorial. Okay. Um, I just need to put in a couple more circles here, um, over here in the, the, this area. So I'm going to grab my circle tool and I'll click my move tool here and click off of there and then grab my move tool. And I'm going to kind of intersect it like right into here. You notice my purple lines kind of coming in here and it's going to kind of tell me where I want to go right in the middle there. And I'm just going to try to eyeball it. That looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do it right, maybe, uh, maybe right, right about there. Kind of go right there. If I hit the shift alt key, it'll do it from the center out just like, so I'm going to do, um, kind of a larger one there. And then I'm going to go above here and then do a smaller one right above it and click my move tool here and see how I did I need to move this one just a little bit over. Gonna try to line that up. It's tricky. You gotta play with it a little bit. Sometimes you get it exactly right, sometimes you don't. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go with those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these two circles. So I'm gonna click, shift click those two circles together. So hit your shift key, click those two circles, and then group them. And then we're also going to rotate these just like we did. Um, no work. How did I do that before? Okay, now I remember what I did. So I'm gonna come back over here and we're gonna um, go to our view menu and go guides, show guides again. I don't know why I had that off. And I wanna set the center point right in the middle there and we're just gonna rotate that around just like we've done everything else. So I'm gonna grab those guys, select them, and then I'm gonna click the R key in the keyboard for the for the rotate tool and in that center point, I'm going to alt click right in that center point there. And we're just going to do it at 60 degrees all the way around, just like we've done before. So hit copy and then control D, control D, control D, control D. And there we go. We've got our circles all the way around in our negative space. And that's it. That's the rest of our snowflake. So I'm going to grab the move tool and go up to view and guides, hide guides. And then I'm going to click and drag that whole shape. And we're gonna go up to object, expand, and click okay. And this time when we do our um, pathfinder over here on the right hand side, instead of click to unite, we're going to say click to minus front. Okay, because we're minusing all the shapes on top of that black shape. So click that. And when we click and move this out, we should have a whole black negative snowflake. Pretty cool, right? So here's the deal. You've got, hopefully, maybe five snowflakes to choose from. I think it'd be awesome for you to try and build your own. And uh, you're going to submit one of these snowflakes to us so that we can cut it out with the laser. So choose your favorite one, the best one that you made. Um, if you're brave enough to um, try your own and make your own, submit that one to us. So what you need to do with that is you'll need to create a new file, a new Illustrator file, and send us that snowflake. Okay, don't send us this. Don't send us this whole file because it'll send us all of these at once. So send us a new file with that one snowflake that you want. That's it. Hope you learned a lot and had fun.